I hope everybody is staying cool in these hot, hot days, but I have something that's hot off my mind, and I hope that you'll find cool. Okay, enough with that. The mentality surrounding armor, and I've fallen into this trap before, is a bit flawed. You see, a lot of people view armor in terms of sets, and you know, that makes sense. Every ten ever since you get, like, the troll set, it's like, ooh, a set bonus. Sets of armor, wow. And the set bonuses can be really cool. Like, the root set and the Fenris set have really good set bonuses, right? But, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's take a look, right? Let's see. Zoom right in on some of these bonuses. So, I mean, look at the the bonuses individually on these pieces. I mean, like, the notable example is the Root Harness and the Fenris Coat. Just, I mean, this, this thing, it's not showing it here, but Fenris Coat not only has the movement speed buff, but also Cold Res and all the whole package that comes with that. You know, immune to cold, immune to freezing, and then frost damage resistance. Very, very strong. And the Root Harness, of course, it's got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Sure, it has its detriments, the movement speed, the fire weak. But the Pierce Res is incredible. It's so good. It's so, so good, even in the planes. It's absolutely monstrously good. And so what happens is, we actually end up figuring out that it's like a mix of armor that's good. And not, not necessarily just a set. Like some sets can be good, provided they have a set bonus, but it's a mix that's what's important. And if you look at the, the helmets, check the helmets. The metal helmets, I never had a problem with, because these things... They just provide solid armor with no detriment at all. They've always been a good investment. Well, for the most part up until the Fenris Hood came out. And now it's like, okay, well, then now I'm not making the padded helmet because Fenris Hood just gives you that beautiful movement speed and then it's easy to switch to full Fenris, which is good, and yada yada. But the other parts, the other metal pieces, the chests, it just provides, I mean, more armor, but at a detriment, and there's no other benefit to you. And yeah, it gives you a little bit more tankiness, but so does bone mass. And even if you stack bone mass on full upgraded padded armor, you can still run into fulling camps, which have ungodly amount of starred and two starred enemies and and falling spear throwers, and then just get killed anyway. So it's really alternate tactics that are going to uh, be number one, 100% guaranteed effective. At which point, you're tanking against things that ultimately don't need as much tanking to be done, and who the tanking process is most effective on uh, enemies which are like smaller, like the fullings, like the Sentinel Shack video that I did with the Crystal Battle Axe with Bone Mass, full Fenris, just obliterating all these little fullings in a building, right? But that building only survives because there aren't like berserkers and shamans absolutely destroying it. And so we had to take out all of these dangerous enemies. But if you take out all the dangerous enemies beforehand to get effective tanking, then having this full metal armor pieces like tanking is completely unnecessary. Because what, I mean, what did we need to tank in full metal in that scenario? Like, n nothing. And because of that, we're just getting this, this drawback. Uh, not to mention all of the so many ways that Valheim. Uh, has to to mitigate 
uh, threats coming your way without even getting hit at all. Like dodge rolling, moving out of the way, uh, sprinting, right? There's uh, at gear middle mouse, crystal battle axe, poke. Uh, just at gear like interceptions, proper spacing. There's sprinting uh, to move yourself here and there while you're attacking so that you can just naturally space out enemies. Uh, having a certain amount of movement speed not reduced so that you can just automatically dodge enemies just by walking back is part of the beauty of the Fenris set and part of the detriment of heavy metal pieces. But I think that there is a system in place and one of the pieces of heavy metal chest and it could apply to future chest pieces or leggings future down the line, you know, that I think is a good start. I think this is a good start for Iron Gate and that is the wolf armor chest. That is because not only does this have uh, decent armor, right? So it's got that bonus. It's got the bonus. And it has a drawback of the minus 5% movement speed reduction, which is somewhat mitigatable with, uh, with Fenris, the rest of it. But then also you have Frost Res, right? You have the Frost Res package. So you have those same three bonuses. And it's a shame that it's Frost Res. It makes sense. But it's a shame because you could just slap on a wolf cape. And then use strategies to not get hit. And then boom, the armor is the chest piece. is Now it's just a minus 5% movement speed reduction, which ain't good. Uh, but the precedent is there. The beautiful, beautiful precedent of also slapping a resistance on top of a metal piece like a chest or leggings that will have a movement speed reduction so now we have a more balanced piece of heavy armor uh to work off of going forward so let's say moving forward we start to get uh i don't know like uh maybe we'll get like lightning res capes and we could get a, fra uh, a, a fire res heavy armor uh, chest piece or leggings and I, th I think that would be uh, cool and would provide a uh, really good incentive for people uh, who have gotten pretty damn good at the game to use heavy armor because right now it's, I, I see a lot of light armor enjoyers and for good reason so many benefits on those and not enough on the heavy pieces well hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and i'll see you guys some other time let me know what you think in the comments bye